My name's Justin Bishop. I've been skateboarding for 20 years, but I've been skating without sight for about five. Yeah, so I just want to talk about the process and what goes through my head when I ollied the six stair at uh, the Vista Skate Park. Usually my routine when I'm exploring a new park is that I'll have uh, a friend, uh, a skater friend, walk me through it uh, and they can describe it to me. I just go through, I'm like, ooh, I want to skate that, that sounds fun, or I'm like, ooh, this sounds possible. So it's more of just like, I'm kind of sizing it up in my head. I got to put 20 minutes to 45 minutes aside just to practice that obstacle, get the timing right. Try to like lock down everything with that obstacle. Like for me now, an obstacle is part of the trick. So before even trying it, I didn't want to do it. <laughs> I, I, uh, I didn't want to do it at all. Uh, the guys, they moved it. They moved the, um, the kicker and that ramp was heavy. So it was like, at the very least, I'll throw myself down this set just for them. You know, just for moving a heavy ramp. I try to use as many tools as possible to help me get my tricks. This is my skate cane. It has a uh, rolling ball tip. So it's actually, there's a ball bearing inside this ball and it spins with the, and so when I'm skating transition or anything like that, it acts like a wheel where I can um, not get stuck on cracks. I have something called a beeper box. I use it to let me know where the ground is. I'll usually put it uh, at the bottom of a stair set or at the top of coping so I don't overshoot or I can judge the ground when I'm in the air. And it's as simple as it sounds. It's just a box that beeps in. Um, so I'm using my ears to kind of figure out how fast is that sound coming towards my face. When he ollied it for me, I was actually listening to how fast he was going. I needed to know how fast I would have to go to clear the set. So uh, when I heard him come, I was like, I want to stand by so I can feel you pass me. I can hear your wheels, how fast you're throwing down and doing it. And I also asked him to like do it with like as short a run as he can. Cause like if I run too long, I'll get lost and I'll veer off, which I did a couple of times, right? It wasn't straight. The first time I did it, I was actually very scared that like I would kick out and clip the last step and roll my ankle or something. So I was like, all right, I just clear it, just clear it. And so it was just uh, the first throw down was the scariest to just throw and hope you clear it. After that first attempt, then I can kind of gauge in my head, oh, I wasn't going fast enough, or like, oh, that was actually a pretty good, uh, pretty good speed, so now just stay with it. I can judge where the ground is coming and like how fast it's coming up, but since I don't use my eyes to gauge it, it's still a little off, so uh, a lot of the times with the attempts is I'd be searching for the ground and I'd be a little too stretched out trying to find it and I wouldn't absorb my impact properly and just kind of like, I was just kind of keep doing it until that timing was perfect. That was the biggest thing I've ever ollied. I could be that, like the honest, uh, the honest one. Let me give you the fake one. It felt amazing. It was so good. The honest one was like, I just felt bad that it took me so long. I was like, uh, you know, so a little bit of, um, you know, being a skateboarder, you're still, even you can do the hardest thing ever and you're still hard on yourself. And I was like, you know, so I was more upset. Like, I was like, man, that took forever. I dropped my cane because I, and I palmed the ground, but I was like, that's good enough. And so that's the real truth. That's a real honest one. I wasn't happy about it till the next day. There's one bail that I was going to call it quits because uh, it was like my third or fourth one and I fell and I was like, oh, no, that's it. And I was like, I gave it like a good shot. And then I heard people and I didn't realize like how many people were watching it. And I'm like, uh, if they're going to ride this wave with me, then I'll, I have to do it. That's one of the coolest things about skateboarding and why I love it is that no one cares about how good you are to someone else. They just know what your level to yourself is. And a skater can pick up on another skater that you're trying to push yourself. Like, like they're gonna witness me breaking through the next level in my head. And that's like, that's what's cool about it. It wasn't some, you know, blind guy all in a six stair. It was that, that's what skateboarding is, it's breaking your next level. It's like doing something you would never do, but you have a whole community behind your back that's doing that set with you. 
not just adaptive skateboarding, but blind skateboarding is blowing up. Skateboarding is made for the blind community. It's like your hands are free for your cane. It's all about feel. It's all about just like riding it out. And I definitely think that like kids growing up in like visually impaired community, if they, you know, hear about me, hear about Dan, they definitely like, I want to try this. And like, I just want to like get kids like skateboarding without sight because when you're blind, a lot of people treat you a lot different, but skaters don't. When you fall at a skate park, whether you're blind or if you can see, all you get is you good and it feels empowering so it's just like I, I want to give that independence to uh, other blind kids coming up.